Hey all, and welcome to Chirp Splat Guides, a rundown on how to use weapons in both Turf War and Anarchy battles. We're going to look over the Splatling family with you today. This has been one of my main weapons since Splatoon 1. I want to start out with the standard Heavy Splatling, then look at some of the variations. To fire the Splatling, first you have to charge by holding the fire button. Letting go will fire an amount relative to the amount of time you spent charging. Going into squid form will cancel both the charge or the firing. It has an incredibly long range, rivaling many snipers. Its coverage is surprisingly not as great as you'd think due to the erratic, spread out nature of the bullets. You can cover a large area, but it won't be solid at all unless you take the extra time. Each shot does 30 damage, requiring 4 shots to splat. The time to splat is insanely fast if you don't take charge time into account. I probably won't get too specific on these numbers for all the variants. They all sit within 2 damage or so of each other, and all take 4 hits to splat. Many bullets, much damage, you don't really have to think about it too hard for this weapon. Knowing how much to charge your tank before firing on the other hand? That is absolutely important. Fully charge it for long range battles where you're not in danger. You can often splat 3 squids with a single charge if they're grouped up even a little bit. For 1v1 fights, the amount you charge should be based on the distance of your enemy. If they're close, half of a single bar is usually enough to finish them off quickly. If they're far away, I usually count on missing half of my shots, either due to bad RNG or just bad aim, so a single bar usually does the trick. One thing I want to add in videos going further is some build info, as well as a rundown on subs and specials. For splatlings, they benefit a lot from run speed. You'll be spending a lot of time running around charging. Two mains and a few subs would not be a bad idea. Ink resistance is also quite useful, so enemy shots don't slow down your strafing while you're trying to get your charge to splat someone. After that, fill out your build with generally good skills like swim speed, special build up, one super jump time reduction is a staple in most builds, and many swear by one sub bomb defense. This is the build I would use, if I had it. The heavy splatlings loadout is quite good in this game, and has good synergy with the playstyle. The sprinkler helps control key points and build your special. Throw it in areas that are hard to hit, but will provide a benefit to your team. Your wave breaker special is incredibly powerful. It marks enemies hit by the waves and does 45 damage. While enemies can jump over the waves, if it hits them and they're in view, it's basically a free splat. Well, now let's go get into some gameplay. In Turf War, the Splatling does a great job with the zone control. It can cover a large area without even having to move. Pick a spot, claim it as yours, and splat anyone who dares come near. You can use the sprinkler to cover your back. This makes sure it's solidly your ink color, with the added bonus that you can hear that clank note sound if someone destroys it trying to flank you. Keep in mind, if you find your area too easy to defend, move up, find a new spot, and defend that instead. Placing your special is similar to the sprinkler. You want somewhere it'll hit people, but not where it can be easily destroyed. The waves can go down ledges, but not up, so keep this in mind. In ranked, the same power applies. You can entrench yourself near the objective, but not too near, and make sure it doesn't fall into enemy hands. We call this being the team anchor. You have a few jobs with this role. First, support your front line. You have a better view of the battle, so take out anyone trying to flank them, and provide fire support. Your second job is to survive, and be a good jump point for allies. Always be close enough where you're actually contributing to the fight, 
but not to the point you're an easy target. Once you get used to the weapon, don't forget, you're not a turret. You don't have to stay still the entire game. It's pretty situational, but flanks with the splatlings are huge. If you can get within mid-range of multiple enemies with a charge tank, it's almost a guaranteed wipeout. This is especially potent in Rainmaker and Tower Control, where enemies get easily distracted or waste all their ink trying to pop the bubble. Both your sub and special can act as shields against ranged enemies in a pinch. This is especially helpful in Tower Control. Keep in mind, buckets and blasters can cause an issue for you. They're able to hit you from areas you can't shoot back. Be prepared if you see some on the enemy team. You'll have to be repositioning a lot more often than usual. Let's take a peek at some of the alternate Splatling versions, beginning with the mini Splatling. It charges faster and unloads faster, but has a shorter range. Similar damage in splat time though. With a bit better ink coverage, this is a more support-like weapon. Honestly, I debated not putting this into the video because it plays so differently from the other splatlings. A quick tip before we get to the gameplay. Once you've started shooting, you can start holding the trigger again to immediately start charging the next volley. This helps cut down on downtime between your shots. In-game, spend your time on the front lines and flanking. You can cover a lot of ground very fast. A lot of similarly ranged weapons do have a faster time to splat than you though, so if you feel like you're missing the upper hand, go ahead and retreat. This applies to both Turf War and Anarchy. Your sub-weapon, the Splat Bomb, is actually quite useful. If you run out of charge before you splat someone, throw one of them for a quick finishing blow. The hammer special? To be honest, I'm not a fan. Its usual benefits still apply, allowing you to push an objective or charge headlong into enemies, but it doesn't provide any particular synergy with this weapon. The Hydra Splatling is on the other end of the spectrum. Super long charge time, extra long fire time, and crazy range at the cost of almost all mobility. The ink coverage is similar to the heavy, but cranked to 11. Lots of ink everywhere, but no amount of solid coverage. With this weapon, you take the anchor gameplay style to the extreme. Going into the range of any other weapon is basically guaranteed death if you don't have a charge ready. So in Turf War, find a large area and claim it for your team. Depending on the stage, you can defend massive stretches of turf, giving your team a good starting point to win off of. In ranked game modes, you absolutely excel at holding and defending stationary objectives. Mobile can be a bit more difficult. Either way, you're going to need to find yourself a good spot by the objective. Reading the battle is very important for mastering this weapon. It's hard for you to reposition, so keep an eye out for things like if your team gets the upper hand and outnumbers the enemy. This means you need to move up because your team will be pushing forward soon, and you don't want to be left behind. You'll see me doing this during this gameplay clip a lot. As for your sub and special, both are fantastic for flushing enemies out of cover, but otherwise, you're better off sticking with shooting. Whew, we have two more variations to go over, but if you've made it this far, do me a favor and like the video. It's really appreciated. Now, the first of the more unique variations is the Nautilus. A big favorite among Splatling mains, but I've always been bad with it to be completely honest. Its fire rate, range, and coverage is somewhere between the heavy and the mini. It has three special features though. First, it does not have reduced accuracy while jumping. Second, it can start charging before the entire charge has depleted. 
third, and most importantly, it can hold a charge for a little over three seconds, even if you're in squid form. This allows for some very fun hit and run tactics. You want to play this weapon similar to the heavy splatling, but you'll want to get your perch a bit closer to the front line. Charge your weapon behind cover, swim to get in range and shoot at enemies. Then swim back to safety. Just make sure to pop out a squid from every once in a while to maintain that charge. You have the point sensor sub, which is pretty okay. It marks enemies so you can see them. This helps you keep track of enemies, even when you're hiding behind cover charging. The ink storm is a weird special for this weapon. It can be used to support during a large fight, slowing enemies and doing little damage, but doesn't have any real synergy with it. A quick note, it might be worth swapping out some of your walk speed gear with swim speed if you use this variant. Last, but not least, is the ballpoint splatling. My personal favorite weapon in the game. Similar to the Nautilus, it can recharge even when the bar isn't completely depleted. Its unique feature though is that it has two firing modes. The first mode lasts for about a quarter of a ring. It shoots a short range spray, similar to the Splattershot Junior, and your movement speed is even faster than the Mini. The second mode kicks in after that quarter bar has gone away, and it has a longer range than the Heavy Splatling, but not quite as far as the Hydras. Most notably, it has perfect accuracy at the cost of a lower rate of fire compared to the other Splatlings. If you recharge while it's in the second fire mode, when you shoot again, it will remain in that fire mode. There is an exception to this. If the recharge filled over one and three quarter bars, it reverts back to the first fire mode. It has the fizzy bomb sub to flush out enemies and the inkjet for a special, which continues the theme of not having synergy, but being good to push an objective. In Turf War, you can make very good use of the weapon's versatility, covering a good amount of turf using the first mode, and sniping anyone that comes into view. In Anarchy, you'll want to fill in where needed, stay close to the objective, keeping the ground covered for your team to traverse using your first mode. Make good use of the secondary mode to pick off far away enemies. When you're acting as a team anchor, you can unload the first mode while behind cover, then come out and fire with the second mode once it changes to that. A good thing to practice is maintaining the mode you want to be in. A good ballpoint user can go through their entire tank without ever leaving the second fire mode. So to wrap up these weapons, if you want to control the battlefield, dictating where enemies can be, but don't have the accuracy to use a sniper. These are the weapons for you. They certainly are for me. And until next time, stay fresh.